It's time for a pride and promotion, extra, as we mosey on down to the Rapid Fire Ranch. Take a listen. Hey everybody, this is Joe Federico of J Federico, and, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah. take two, <laughs> three, two, one. Hey folks, this is Joe Federico of J Federico Marketing and the Pride in Promotion podcast, but today we are exchanging our marketing caps for bolo ties and spats. And I have a very special guest on the Rapid Fire Ranch, Robert Roche, the new author of the book, The Summer Between. Robert, thank you so much for joining the ranch. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm looking forward to this. I'm a little bit, um, a, I'm a little ap apprehensive about what these questions are going to be, but I'm excited to go for it. That's why you're here, especially as one of the newer <laughs> clients to kind of make you dig into the marketing. We're going to have such a good time. Good. So tell everybody more about your book and then I'll give you some rapid fire questions for marketing. Oh, sure. The book, The Summer Between, is set in 1978, mostly in Manhattan and also suburban New Jersey. And it's about a young man, Andy Pollack. Uh, you know, the, the story was based on, uh, inspired by Siddhartha, by Herman Hesse. So it's really about a young man's journey over one summer and all the people that teach and influence him, some good, some bad, uh, uh, along this journey. And it's him and his gal pal, Elena Plesko. Uh, and it's a little bit of a triage with um, his love, love interest, Ben Hop, who comes into the story about a third of the way through. Um, and it's like the three of them and all of these other characters and his mother. It's a family story. It's kind of a bittersweet saga. And um, it's also considered, people have considered it historical fiction from a period um, that a lot of people now don't, aren't that aware of. Before social media. Before social media. Now. <laughs> yes. yes yes what would you be doing you'd be like a, a pastry chef or something i would probably be running making a newspaper meatballs. in the 70s yeah or or making uh meatballs or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. something um but probably something creative um yeah. oh for sure i'd probably running a pr agency in the 70s and 80s is i think i would have would be doing if and i writing your great head. books as well yeah which yeah, is I, well, you know that is a can be a biatch sometimes <laughs> Well worth it, but yeah, you know. Um, yeah. So, so, but congratulations, Thank and you. I'm so honored to be working with you and have you on the podcast and nice. and to and to pick your brain because now this is really important to, as we had said, trade in our marketing caps for bolo ties and some some spats. So okay. here we go, four questions. But okay. here we go. You ready? Mm -hmm. If you could market a new flavor of ice cream that were to come out in the world of your book. The summer between, Ooh. what would it be and which platform would you market that on? Very interesting. What current platform or what platform in the 70s? What current platform? So we're doing uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of time travel here. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to go with poppers because I hate them. So, um, But there's a little bit about that in the book. Um, I'm trying to think from ninth from the seventies, what was in there? Probably something like, I don't know, like Polynesian or Hawaiian flavored ice cream, um, which was really big. Like in all the research I did and all like Hawaii was like big because it was still kind of new as yeah. a state in 1959, I think it was. Um, yeah. So let's go with, um, Polynesian Hawaiian ice cream. And what platform would it go on? Well, I think Instagram is probably the one that's most used now. Or TikTok, which I'm not that familiar with. But yeah. Okay. So I can definitely run with you this nostalgic marketing campaign of retro 1970s Hawaiian, you know, tropical ice cream. Yeah. yeah. Cross around with the book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we can run this whole different campaign together. That'd be awesome. And yeah, it also okay. sounds delicious. Yeah. Sounds good. Coconutty and pineapple and all that good stuff. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, sign me up. We could talk like, about this. Feel the sunrise colors, that whole seventies vibe, you know, sunsets, yes. all of that. Like, Three Three's company, colors. ask music. Oh, and... Three's company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm down. Okay. <laughs> Number two. Speaking of Instagram, imagine Instagram was a person at a party. How would you describe them and their personality? And then also bonus question, give them a name. 
I think the first thing that came to mind is they would be like bipolar or like, um, mm -hmm. like Sybil, like with that old character Sybil that Sally Field played where she yes. had multiple personalities. Yes. Um, and their name, let's just say, would be Sybil. <laughs> okay. Okay. And that's interesting too, as, as you're learning more about the platform, where that answer came from. So yeah. Yeah, that's I mean, because it's everything. That's not to be derogatory in any way no, or, no. or anything against any sort of mental illnesses, God forbid. Sure. But it's like, but it's really just like the diversity of it. It can be mm -hmm. anything from like cute puppies to save the planet to, you know, like crazy blooper videos, you know, it's, it's right. all over. Yeah. Which are still popular, by the way. Yes. Especially and now. I watch them. And we scroll for hours. Mindlessly, I do it too, full transparency, but then we got to hone in on really what the persona says and everything else on the platform. Yeah. But it's but it's actually um, a little bit more popular than TikTok, believe it or not. So, good, good. Um, and that's what you're on. So that's perfect. Yeah. Um, question number three. Are you ready for this? Yes. What would be your tagline if you were launching a new line of shoes in the 1970s to be marketed? Hmm. Tagline would be something about platforms and patent leather. Um, geez. <laughs> um, rising to new heights <laughs> on my platform shoes or something like that. That sounds. I mean, my prom shoes were like this high, dude. Well, okay. We could definitely work with that in many different ways, especially for the queer community. Just yeah. saying. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, of course, they could they could be heels. <laughs> exactly, and, or and platform shoe or cleats. Do any characters in your book wear those platform shoes? You know, I or don't would think. They? I, oh yeah, of course, Andy would, and Ben probably. He was more like a like a desert boot kind of guy. And Elena was definitely a fashion plate. So she would, yeah, she did wear, she did wear um, platforms when they went to the disco. I don't want to give there, anything. Away. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Cross promote and then buy the book. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, which fictional character from a TV show or a book, you can use your own the summer between would make the best marketing guru and why? Ah, TV character from the seventies. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Oh, let's see. There's so many good things. I would say, well, I had a like major crush on Mary Tyler Moore and her series in the seventies and Archie Bunker would be another good one. Ooh. I would say something in like a, the comedy realm where they also dove into like tricky subjects. Cause the book's kind of funny too. Um, but with serious subject matter. Okay. So like, you know, like dark comedy satire, um, with some of these like really great iconic comedians. I grew up, not that I look my age, thank you very much, but I did grow up watching those shows. Mm -hmm. And I would be very intrigued to learn social media from a Mary Tyler Moore working in the newsroom. Oh my gosh, totally. And I would be really interested to get into the mind of an Archie Bunker too, to be honest. Yeah, yeah that would be fascinating. Or have us work together on a on a campaign would be very unique. Yeah, uh, in, yeah. in my opinion, I want to take a uh, take a DeLorean back in time and 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 see if I we can do it. I want to visit. With, I want to have lunch with Maude. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I really want to throw my cap in the air. I'm with, so glad with we're that we're as close in age as you just as you just admitted because that makes me feel better. I admit nothing. I admit nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robert. That is the end of today's episode of the Rapid Fire Ranch. But where could we find you on all the socials out there in TV land and how to purchase your book? Oh, great. Well, that's so generous of you. Uh, on Instagram, it's Robert Italia, R-O-B-E. No, I'm sorry. R-O-B period, E-R-T period, I-T-A-L-I-A. On Facebook, it's Robert Rosh, R-O-B-E-R-T-R-A-A-S-C-H. On LinkedIn, it's Robert Rosh Author. And the book can be found on all platforms. Currently, it's hardcover and ebook on um, barnesandnoble.com, Alstora, Apple, um, Amazon, of course, and um, I'm forgetting the other ones, bookshop.org, and there's one more, um, but pretty much anywhere. And independent bookstores, go to your independent bookstores and ask them for the book. And if they don't have it, they'll order it for you, and maybe they'll start carrying it. 
Thank you so much. As they should, as they should. Thank you. <laughs> well, congratulations. We can't wait to see where your social media platforms go. All the luck in the world of success for your books and your social media, Robert. And everybody out there in TV land, this is Joe Federico of J Federico Marketing. But you just listened to another episode of the Rapid Fire Ranch. Go forth with pride and we'll talk soon. Peace.